I'm delighted today to be speaking with my friend and colleague, Dr. Catherine Lloyd, who I met many years ago in Brisbane when I was working for the Australian Centre for Peace and Conflict Studies. And the director at the time, Professor Kevin Clement, said, you've got to meet this woman, Kat. She's all into creativity. You guys are going to get along. And I'm thinking, I work in conflict resolution. I don't know why arts and creativity is going to be of interest. But Kat and I caught up for coffee and it's sparked a whole lot of collaboration. We've done a few really cool things over the years. We did some workshops in Brisbane for conflict resolution practitioners. I think we called it the artistry of conflict resolution. And we used some of your art-based techniques to help people reflect on their practice and where they might want to go. And Kat has edited a number of books. I think you're up to book three now on things to do with storytelling with a Andrew Rickson and I've had a chapter in each of those books, which is very exciting. And the last one's just been released. So welcome, Kat. Thank you for spending time with me today. Oh, thanks, Sam. And it's wonderful to be here. And as I said, always say to you, I'll go on any journey with you. So it's good to be with this one. Recently, Kat has published this awesome book, which I'm going to hold up, Seriously Playful Creativity which is a really fantastic book for people who want to develop their creativity. What I realized as I read it is you don't actually have to be artistic to be creative. And that was kind of a relief for all of us who feel like we can't draw or we can't paint or we can't do any of those artistic things. That doesn't mean you can't be creative, right? Well, that's one of the things that I'm always trying to get through to people is that being creative is not necessarily about being artistic. The two can be and are linked, but also creativity is much, much more than that. So when people start talking about, I'm not creative because I can't paint, I can't draw, I can't sing, and maybe do those artistic endeavours, then the conversation is much broader and wider than that. Although I would say that we all can do those things because they are human qualities. And as children, we do those things. We draw, we paint we sing, we improvise, we play, we make things up. So we're doing that. But what happens, sadly, somewhere along the line, that is not developed in many respects. And we start to go into other areas that we think are much more serious, maybe, or the professions that we should be going into. And that the arts are somehow not seen as a proper profession in many respects and you know when are you going to get a real job or when are you going to grow up or whatever the case might be and it's a tragedy because we, we lose something as a result of that and it, it also takes something away from us as human beings to recognize that fundamentally we are all creative and we have that capacity and we just need to spend time um, honoring that and working with it in different sorts of ways. And I think speaking as a perfectionist myself, we get really judgmental, don't we, if, if it doesn't look perfect, if it doesn't look the way we think it should look. And so we sort of limit our exposure to engaging in those sort of vulnerable activities where you just mess things up and see what happens. And while that might be a shame in that it limits our opportunities to participate in things that as kids, as you said, we found joyful, like drawing or painting or just play, it can have significant impacts in our serious work as well, if, it, if we're not motivated or inspired to be creative in that environment. So it's not just about losing the opportunity to play. We lose important skills that we can translate into more professional situations. We can still use those skills. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I called my book Seriously Playful Creativity, because it is that. It is that we can be serious and playful in, in all our professions. And it really does require that of us because in any profession, there's the work itself of what requires creativity and innovation and new ideas, new possibilities, new opportunities. And there's also the other side to that, which is how we actually show up to the people around us and how do we support others in bringing their creativity to a situation. So if we minimise the importance of creativity but actually think that we can have innovation or that we're going to get new ideas without creativity being part of the process, then we're kidding ourselves. They are absolutely intertwined. You don't have innovation without creativity. 
And in today's world where everything's changing so dramatically, you need to be creative just to keep up with all the things that are happening in the world, don't you? You can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again because it doesn't work anymore. The quote about if you keep on doing the same things and expect to get a different outcome, it's a sign of madness or something like that. Maybe that was (laughs) Einstein. But it is true. You know, if we want a different outcome, then we have to approach things from different perspectives, different angles. And we do need to bring other ways of thinking or other ways of being to the situation in order to be able to generate different outcomes or new solutions, ideas, products, services, whatever it is that we're working on. When you link it to conflict as well, to bring a new way of seeing the situation or a new conversation to that, a new way of engaging in that conflict to be able to have a different outcome. Mm. And often in conflict, what each party wants separately isn't possible. So often the only way forward is to come up with a creative outcome that meets as many of their needs as possible. It's something that that isn't obvious because if it was obvious, they would have already found it. So a lot of what we do in a mediation or other conflict resolution processes is try and help people come up with a creative outcome that's going to work for them. Can you tell me, how would you define creativity? I know there are lots of different definitions, but what's an easy way or your way of defining what it is? Creativity is a complex thing and there is no one definition. I actually came up with a definition when I did my doctoral thesis. And being inspired by this conversation, I'm probably going to go back to some of these things and rethink some of the definitions. But it is a very broad field as one of the early people who was engaged in supervising me with my doctoral thesis said to me, don't get too caught up in trying to unravel creativity because it is such a complex and contested area. Define it for yourself and move on. So I did. And the definition that I actually gave was that creativity is an open system of interactions, relationships and environmental factors that overlap and create opportunities for new connections, ideas and solutions. I still think it stands very strong in in many ways. However, given today's conversation too about emotion and creativity, then I think there's other elements that can come into play for that, which is where and how does emotion sit within the context of creativity? And I guess you talked about the open system and relationships and emotions always going to be part of even the environment that we're in um, has an impact on our emotions and vice versa. Oh, definitely. I can only think of one of the poems that really resonate for me. And I have actually above my desk here, which is Rumi's poem about the guest house and how every day something comes into our sphere that is going to trigger us in some way, shape or form. That might be joy, sadness, grief, friendships, whatever it is, there's some emotive aspect that will greet us or arrive at our door at some point in time. And so, yes, welcoming that and recognising what is it, what's the value there for us of that emotion that we're perceiving or feeling or that has arrived from some sort of interaction environmental factor Mm. that suddenly we're triggered in some way. Mm. There's kind of a myth, Kath, the tortured artists, that the people who are most creative, at least in an artistic sense, have really dark emotions, are really depressed or a bit manic or they don't have a balanced sense of emotion and they're certainly not happy, joyful people. Do you think you have to have those sort of deep, dark emotions to be creative in an artistic sense? Well, emotion is a range of things, as we've just talked about, and we definitely know that dark, deep emotions can drive creativity in various ways, frustration, anger, grief. You only have to look at Picasso's Guernica to to know that. What about Van Gogh chopped off his ear? I mean, that was pretty dramatic. Well, (laughs) exactly, Van Gogh. And, And his work, actually, his work was a combination of both deep sadness but also delight and joy. You you see that range across his work, absolutely. And he was a tortured soul, but he also found joy in the work that he did as well, and that's very, very represented. So I think that emotions do have a huge part to play in our creative responses to things, but I don't think we just have to be driven by 
being tortured souls. I think the big thing is creativity is playing out all the time, each and every day, and how we improvise our life, the things that we do, how we construct our lives, the interactions we have, the work that we do. So how do we use and understand our emotion to drive our creativity or the energy around our creativity for the endeavour that we're doing? If we're trying to make change, what are we motivated by? What is that creative, energetic emotion that's driving that? And is it generative and productive and creates positive change? Or is it destructive and is actually unhelpful and is going to cause suffering and pain for others? So I think intention and motivation is a big one. And so awareness, having awareness around our emotion and what we do with that, because emotion in many respects is a creative act in and of itself. Mm. Oh, that's such a powerful thing to say. I love two th things that you've said or two themes. One is that emotion can be the energy that drives creativity. And it doesn't necessarily matter what the emotion is, but it creates an energy in us that can translate into creativity. I love that. The other thing that you said that I think was super powerful just then was that we're creative all the time and we don't have to set aside artistic time where we're going to be creative that we are creative in the way that we live our lives I think you said improvise our lives every day I really love that it's so powerful well we are again this conversation now you know, we've planned for this conversation to do this but the actual conversation that we're having is not scripted mm. it's a spontaneous conversation that's taking place between us so it's improvised now we have a theme and an idea to work with, but we're not running a script and our lives are not scripted. Yes, we have some plans and ideas, but each and every day, again, we wake up and we go, well, we plan to do this maybe. We've got the week ahead of us. But there's so much that happens that can't be planned for, we haven't planned for. So we then have to respond and or act accordingly to be able to take what is coming towards us but also to do what we need to do as well so it's a dance between responding to and acting and creating so yes we are creating all the time now you could say that you know some of our life in some ways and I don't mean this to be derogatory to any of our lives but some of it's quite pedestrian we wake up and we have our breakfast and we do our things and off we go but that in and of itself is also a creative act how how we engage with the breakfast that we're having. Are we just eating it and not thinking about it? Or do we actually look at the fruit that we're having and the colour of it? And as we slice through it, each thing can be a moment of really appreciating the absolute awesomeness of the lives that we have. And yet we forget about how incredible our lives really are. And I think what comes into mind saying that is how powerful our imaginations are. Imagination is a huge thing. We're imagining our lives all the time too, projecting into the future about what we might do, what is possible. We visualise things. So our imaginations are very, very powerful and creativity requires imagination. Mm. And again, I'm hearing that we can be a bit more mindful perhaps of how we are already being creative in our day-to-day -day lives, but we might also be able to notice opportunities to be a little more creative and it might be cutting the piece of fruit in a different way or sitting somewhere different as we drink our morning coffee or looking for little opportunities to do things a bit differently and then see how it feels, see what happens, see what we're inspired to do because of that change. Another phrase you've used, how it changes our perspective on things. And it sounds like a lot of creativity is about looking at things from different perspectives. Oh, definitely. And there's all sorts of ways that we can do that, but we need to be aware for a start. So I think awareness is a big part of it. And we do, we all become creatures of habit and those habits can be really helpful. If we had to think every single day about how do I brush my teeth again, <laughs> that's gonna take a lot of effort. So there are certain things that if we can create some really good habits, they're helpful for our lives. 
if we have things that are habitual that are not helpful, we need to be aware of that because that can also be not making our lives particularly joyful or painful. Creativity can be a habit that we can start to build into our lives, which is how can I look at this differently? How can I reframe the situation? How can I get a different perspective on this? I think about this in a particular way. What would it be if I thought about it in another way? How could I think about it in another way? What would be the mechanism that would enable me to be able to think about this from another perspective? And again, I, I've just heard you say something really interesting, that creativity in a way can be sort of an antidote to mindless habits, but then you can develop creativity as a habit. It can be your habit to think about things differently, to see things differently, to try things out that are new and um, to be open to opportunities. I love that. Yeah, definitely. I think you know that at the beginning of the year, well, towards the end of last year, I decided I was going to give myself a challenge for this year. And I decided that I would produce an image a day. I call it MM365. And so that image a day is inspired by uh, observations, reflections, conversations, anything that sparks my imagination in some way. And then that image is a response to that. So it becomes a visual representational metaphor for what it is that I've engaged with or has sparked my interest in some way. That has become a habit and I've created it as a daily habit. Now, it's quite challenging at times from a time perspective, from an inspiration perspective. I'm reflecting on why I've, I gave myself that challenge too. And it was also so that I wouldn't leave my creativity at the whim of just waiting to be inspired, mm -hmm. that I could be very intentional and deliberate with that. Even when I didn't feel inspired or motivated, it would be like, you can do this. It's available to you. It's amazing because every time I step into my little studio space to create this piece of work that sometimes I arrive and go, I have no idea what I'm doing, none. I'm not inspired, I'm tired, I'm this, whatever it is. But I will stand in that space and I trust, I trust that it will emerge. So it's like trusting our, I think it's trusting our intuition. And I think that links with emotion as well. These hunches mm -hmm. and these emotions that we have that we can engage with and be aware of. But we do have to create a little bit of space for that. And sometimes becoming habitual with that in some way. To, to give ourselves that moment to be there with it. And even that feeling of being uninspired or bored or tired or unmotivated, you turn that into creativity. You turn those uninspiring, what feel like uncreative feelings into creativity by that discipline of going in there. Yeah, and it is a discipline. It has become a discipline. And as I said, it's challenging at times because I sometimes don't want to. <laughs> and part of me is going, I don't want to. <laughs> and yet I go, you do this, just get in there and make it happen. And it's extraordinary when we, in a way, discipline ourselves to, to actually show up. I guess it's deciding what it is that we care about and decide I am going to focus my attention and my energy and my it would be feeling an emotion towards this. Yeah, and I guess if you didn't feel any emotion towards it, you wouldn't do it. You know, you wouldn't care, that's right. would you? Yeah. It, yeah, well, that's a big one, isn't it? You know, so emotion, again, we talked about energy. Emotion is an energy. It's giving us a signal and a sign about the things that we care about mm -hmm. or even if it's a complete reaction against Again, it's an emotion towards something that we feel a revulsion to or disgust or frustration with or whatever, that's an emotion or we're being drawn to because it's, it gives us joy or love or feelings towards feeling good about ourselves or towards another person. All of this is playing out all the time and that's where that awareness of emotion comes in and can be so very useful because we can regulate it in some way too. So we can be spontaneous, but we can also be intentional. And creativity isn't something that just kind of arrives and inspires us. I hear you saying that creativity 
sometimes needs to be a discipline and sometimes isn't easy and you have to commit your energy and your attention to it. It's not necessarily something that just turns up and makes it something very easy and beautiful. You actually have to put some effort into it. You do have to put effort in. One of my favourite quotes is by Picasso and he says, when inspiration arrives, I want it to find me working. And I love that because it is in that showing up and being there that inspiration can and will arrive. We also know that we can be out for a walk or people say, where do you get your ideas? Oh, when I'm running, when I'm swimming, out walking, having a shower, whatever it is. And we have an aha moment or an epiphany or something like that. But I'm also going to suggest that that's probably come about because we've prepared ourselves in some way. So we've done maybe some background work, we've written something and we're struggling over it. So we go out and do something and then, oh, I've got clarity. So it's not that we haven't done any groundwork for it. I would suggest that a lot of the time when those moments of insight arrive, it's because we've actually laid the ground for that to actually happen. As you're saying that, Kat, I'm remembering how I came to contribute the chapter in your latest edited book with Andrew, that I'd said, oh, no, I'm too busy. I can't do it. I'm not inspired. Nothing's coming to me. And then I was driving to school, taking my daughter to school one day. And all of a sudden, these ideas were in my head. And I'm thinking, well, that could work. That could work. That could work. And I remember getting to school, dropping my daughter off and then messaging you saying, I've got an idea. I think this is it. I think I can write this. And then it was really easy. But yeah, yeah, I'd already sort of said, no, I can't do it but then these ideas started happening at a very awkward moment because I couldn't take notes while I was driving (laughs) it worked out yeah and maybe that was because I'd been trying so hard to come up with a good idea and once I let it go it it came back it arrived (laughs) well I think that's the thing too about creativity is that it is that the doing the work and you, you said something earlier on that creativity does require some effort and some discipline and Absolutely. I think we have our unique expression and we are creative and things are happening all the time. But also it's being aware of that. Think about the entrepreneurs. Wow, how did they get that amazing idea? Again, it's that prepared mind or it's that curious mind. It's a mindset for, you know, looking out for these opportunities and seeing things in a different way that, you know, that other people don't. So it is about... um, keeping ourselves open and receptive to to what is around us. So if we have that very tunnel vision, which sometimes we actually need to, that creative process in many respects, if you think about elements of the creative process, which is divergent and convergent. So Mm -hmm. when we're looking for ideas, we need to go wide and explore and be the, the adventurer out there and just gathering information and, you know, pulling, starting to pull things together. And then at some point in time, depending on what it is, you know, your business idea or a product or a service or whatever it is, you have to start converging and making choices and decisions and discarding certain things in order to to bring something to fruition as well. Mm -hmm. Creativity is such a mix of things, of this deliberate, intentional way of being and this spontaneous, intuitive way of being as well. I think it does link into conflict very much so because they are the things about laying the groundwork for conflict resolution. I said was a beautiful metaphor for what we would do in conflict resolution. We would gather lots of information, try and find out about everybody's underlying needs and interests, and we'd get as much information as we can on the table, make a kind of a big mess of it, and yeah. then converge then say okay given all of this information that we have now all of this sharing and this communication what can we kind of build that will help you move forward and some of that is culling things that are not workable or not feasible and rearranging things in a way that might potentially for example lead to an agreement or a way of moving forward Mm. i've also heard a really important word just a moment ago. And I think it's actually the letter C in your book, curiosity. Mm -hmm. Me, it seems like curiosity is almost a precondition for creativity. Would you agree? Oh, curiosity is fundamental to creativity. If you're not curious, I think creativity is going to struggle to manifest. Being curious is a very important feature 
that can again show up in different sorts of ways in terms of well what does it mean to be curious having that open mind being prepared to look at things in different ways not judge too quickly be able to critique at some point in time but maybe not immediately there's qualities about curiosity that link quickly to being creative and creative output mm. And all of those things, you could be talking about conflict as well. All of those things are required for effective management of conflict. If I can just pick up on that, totally, because, you know, a conflicted situation can be very narrow. People are like, we've got our points of view. We're here. Never the twain shall meet when it's high conflict. And when conflict has been around for a long period of time, people get very caught in ways of being, ways of thinking and that they are right, and that the other person is wrong, and that their view or their perspective is the right view or perspective, and the other person's is incorrect. So if there is to be resolution, then really one of the qualities that would need to happen between parties is to let go of all of that uh, mindset around, I'm right, you're wrong, and start to be curious about what else is possible here? What am I not seeing? How can I take on board this person's perspective? Why do they think like this? Help me to get to understand this person's point of view around something. But that actually takes effort and energy and a willingness to step into somebody else's shoes for a period of time to understand mm -hmm. what's driving this person's point of view. And I hear another C word there, certainty. Certainty is not helpful in conflict resolution. And what you've implied is changing to a mindset of uncertainty. If you combine uncertainty with curiosity, then you're likely to come up with something that could be creative. And from a conflict resolution perspective, it might be a really great outcome to a conflict or a way of moving forward through the conflict. Yeah, and there's multiple ways of doing things too. That's the other thing. And sometimes we might get caught up on the right way, mm -hmm. but really in many respects it's about finding a way that actually moves us from one situation to another. So it could even be that, you know, that you're trying some different things, experimenting with some ideas in the first instance to at least shift from where we are from here Maybe we want to go right over to here, but actually getting over to here at the moment is not, that's not possible right now, but we can shift along the way. And it's the same as creativity around anything. If you want to produce great work, a great piece of music, write a book, uh, create great product services, you may not be able to get there immediately, but what you need to do is experiment and try different things to actually move along to get to the point in which we have an outcome that we go, wow, that's, that's really something, that's real innovation, or that's real change, transformation, whatever it is. And maybe that's not what's needed. Maybe that massive transformation is not what's needed. It's just a small shift that can create a huge difference to people's lives. I do think sometimes that we get hung up on the big sort of creativity, the big C's, the big I, the big T, the big creativity, the big innovation, the big transformation, rather than realising that everyday creativity, small things can have quite an impact towards making change and that can really, the one little thing can make a difference in somebody's life or one little word or something can make a difference between people who've been in a conflicted situation. So as well as going through some of the activities in your seriously playful creativity book, what are some ideas about how people can develop a kind of creativity mindset? What sort of things would help? Well, I, I think it's having the conversation for a start. That's a big help to actually have the conversations around creativity and to have 
good conversations around creativity because often they're about, oh, I don't paint and going back to, I don't paint, I don't draw. And it's more than that. So it's actually having those conversations to say creativity is so much more than those things. Although I do encourage people to participate and interact with artful activity because I think it can help shift our mindset in different sorts of ways. So it starts with a, a conversation. And then I think it starts with those small numbers of thinking about well, what is it that I might like to do differently with me myself? How do I want to show up to the world differently? What, what would that take? Well, maybe you might go and read something. You might go and read something that gives inspiration. You might have conversations with people who you think are particularly creative in different sorts of ways. What resonates for one person around creativity may not necessarily resonate for another. So it's actually finding our way of, of entering into what does it mean to be a creative person or a creative being how does that show up in my life when I'm working with people I have quite deliberate focused creative processes or activities that I work with people to help stimulate and trigger those different ways of thinking one of the things that I do work with a lot is is imagery I'll have people create their own imagery or I will work with images that I have I work with commercial range of images but I also have created now out of this year-long project, I've created Maverick Minds images and I worked with them recently in a couple of situations and they were very well received because imagery helps people. They are metaphors for helping people to see things differently, to, to cut through sometimes that really cognitive way of thinking or being that can bog us down and actually bypass some of that into much more of a feeling way of being about things. And you don't need to have an art studio. You don't need to have training no. in oils no. or pastels no, no, or no, no, music. No. You know, you can do it with whatever you have, whatever environment you're in. As you said, oh, it's a it's creative yes. way of you being in the world with whatever your world looks like and what's around oh, you. Oh, absolutely. I'd encourage people to draw, though. Just get a little book and, you know, get your pencil, go out there, make a line. We all know how to make marks. Mark making is a basic human skill and keep writing. I think the other thing is whilst with technology, we may move away from actually some of the hand skills. And I think coming back to our hands are really important. So making stuff, I think is really important to creativity because we actually think through our hands we think through making and creating. So I'd that's why cooking, gardening, um, whatever it is, that when we're actually using our hands, these digits are linked to our thinking and our creativity. So making, creating, thinking, creativity go hand in go hand in hand. <laughs> Helping people to get moving, I think, is another thing. When we're stuck one of the biggest things that we can do is get moving, go for a walk, uh, go and have a look, you know, at a different view, a different perspective, just do something that shifts us, our energy in a different way. So there's many ways that we can actually engage reflection as well, looking for ways that we can become reflective people, professionals, practitioners, whatever that is, and particularly in the conflict um, mediation resolution world is professional development around how can we as professionals shift our own way of thinking? So I think that's an important thing too. Also, when we're working with our clients is remembering that's a co-creative environment. So how do we co-create with the people around us in order to create different outcomes too? And in a lot of ways, what we do as a mediator, for example, is try to encourage the parties to co-create because a good resolution is one that both parties have created yeah. together. It's not one that we give them or just one of them comes up with and the other person accepts. That can be a bit of a challenge in conflict to motivate people to do that co-creation work. Mm, well, it takes an open mind to do that, that co-creative work and a willingness to negotiate and a willingness to let go of your preconceived ideas around things. So again, I think that's the other thing about creativity is that we have preconceived ideas around how things should be. And you said earlier on about being the perfectionist, it needed to be this way. <laughs> and so if we're caught up in that the outcome has got to be this, then we may miss what is actually another 
possibility or opportunity. But that's not to say we, that we still can't work towards the outcome that we think might also be a useful outcome too. I think it's about being very skillful people um, and actually being, again, sort of deliberate and intentional around things and understanding what are we doing here? What's our purpose? What's driving us to, to need to create this change when things become too painful? Maybe that's the point in time that, you know, we decide change needs to happen and it, you know, better to try and sort of do that before it's a crisis. But sometimes it's the crisis that actually drives us towards having to make the change. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. And in that way, I guess sometimes unpleasant emotions are the sign that we need to be creative, that we need to do something differently to change the status quo, to move into a better place. Oh, I think so. And again, that awareness. So if we're, if we're conscious and aware of how we're feeling or showing up and, and really respecting that, that's a lot of information there for us to be able to work with and think, well, maybe things need to be different to what they are now. If it's pain, whatever it is, is painful, or is causing frustration, then what, what is it that we can do differently to step away from that? If that's not the emotion that we want to be feeling, if we want to actually feel something else or ha and have a different outcome to what is currently the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier in our conversation that you are really motivated to, to seek out joy at the moment. And one of the things that I talk about in my emotions course is um, some work that's, that's founded on the work of Lisa Feldman Barrett and Susan David, where they talk about if you want to change the way you feel, then it's an active process. You go looking for situations people experiences that bring you the emotion that you're wanting more of and then you know the neurons that fire together wire together the more you experience it the more it becomes a habit the more you will feel it in the future and it sounds a little bit like it's a similar kind of process with creativity if you want more creativity in your life then you you have to seek it out you have to go looking for opportunities to be creative in little ways in your day-to-day -day life and as your brain gets used to this process of engaging in creativity then it builds the capacity to be creative in bigger ways and i guess bringing that full circle for you that's something that obviously brings you a lot of joy being creative is something that's obviously a passion and creates joy in your life Oh, totally. Yes, absolutely. I truly believe that we are, human beings are creative beings. That is a fundamental belief that I have. And everybody is creative just by being a human being. And it shows up each and every day, but we forget it. And we take it for granted. And we in some respects, abuse it, I think, at times too. You know, we're not kind towards our creativity. Um, we can be harsh, the self-talk that we give ourselves about certain things. So most definitely I, I'm all for moving towards creativity, that it is part of who we are, that there are ways that we can engage in our creative lives that are meaningful be that just an absolute unique expression of us that has no real purpose to it apart from being human and that it gives us joy right through to what do we want to change in our world, our society that is going to give, you know, different outcomes for people so that the world is a better place to live. So I think there's a, for me, there's also a very holistic way of thinking about it, an altruistic way of thinking about creativity that, if we use our creativity for good <laughs> instead of evil, um, then, then we can make the changes that we want to see that are better for ourselves and better for the people around us and that we can have joyful experiences if that is our focus around creativity too, that we want to bring joy to our lives and, and help to bring joy to other people's lives too. What a perfect way to wrap up, Kat. I think you, you. I think you just basically gave us your mission statement. You know, your your purpose in life. Seek joy. Seek creativity. Well, I think honor your creativity. Honor your creativity, and I think joy will will be what will follow as a, as a result of that. When we start to really find what is our creative way of being in the world, 
and that will actually then manifest and I think we will all be happier human beings.